Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're right on time as the show is about to begin. And uh, we'll be doing a very, very important uh, discourse today because it's it's something that affects uh, myself and Pamela. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, yes, and of course, every woman out there. Yeah. And we have a journalist in the house. Uh, oh God, why did I just say it? I was <laughs> going to keep you guys on suspect. You can still suspect. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> but then we have a journalist now in the house. We'll be discussing a very, very important uh, discussion this evening. She is no other uh, than Stella Uta. Hi. Thank you. Hi, like Jen. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. I'm excited to be here. Mm. Yeah, we are also excited ladies. to have you this yeah. evening. Yeah, indeed. All right. Um, uh, before we begin, I, I do like to take you through uh, something I found out. It says, in a world where journalism was basically viewed as a profession dominated by men in the past, findings have shown that Nigerian women journalists experience different types of gender unsafety including discrimination in news gathering, production, and sexual harassment. Most of the affected women used risky coping strategies such as ignoring, and most media organizations lack the policies and framework of action. Now, in a survey by the International News Safety Institute and the International Women's Media Foundation reports 64% of female journalists around the world out of 875 women from countries across the globe reported experiencing intimidation, threat, and abuse while working. Now, these abuse were reportedly perpetrated by a boss, supervisor, and even co-workers. A journalist had said being a journalist in Somalia is a dangerous business, especially if you're a woman. Now, more so if you want to cover taboo top topics. And like I said earlier, joining us uh, to discuss working as a female journalist. Of course, we are going to be looking at the pros and cons. Is uh, no other than uh, Stella Uta. How do you do today? To I'm doing well, thank yeah. you. All right, okay. you you saw what I read, yeah. or you you heard what yeah. I read yeah. to you. Do you in any way kind of agree? Yeah, I kind of agree because yeah, men, whether journalists or um, as female men, just feel that um, they just find the need to intimidate women mm. so yes i i agree with you and um uh in the course of the conversation we will see how we can talk to our men and uh, talk to men out there mm. to treat women as though we are their sisters or even women are their wives right mm. sisters aunties and so, so yeah, there's that not an issue in the first place if the, the, the reason why the intimidation are there the reason why the harassment are there is because perhaps uh, presently maybe it has reduced to, to, to an extent because also mm -hmm. so it's still it's not the way it used to be before yeah. however it's still there so perhaps you said that they should be we should be treated women should be treated as their sisters as perhaps their, their wives and mm -hmm. the rest course, and the, yes. maybe that's the reason why women are kind of looked down when like oh you're a journalist you're, you're a woman you should be at home you should be in the kitchen you should be no i think we have passed the era of women being in the kitchen because oh. and uh, oftentimes men also want to know like they want to they just meet a lady they want to know what are you doing are you just sitting at home or something mm. yeah women should be gainfully employed whether in the journalism or in the circular job whatever but a job that went by engage i mean women should be meaningfully engaged mm. whether it's self-employed or they are employed mm. out there mm. that's way it can it can be a bet it can make the society a better place because mm. you said empower a woman and you're empowering a nation mm. so if you have a woman who is sitting at home doing nothing and maybe and uh, with the uh, with the assumption that in the future she will be a mom mm. she she needs to get something doing so that she can support that child and bring the child mm. in the way that the child can also be meaningful to the society okay mm. how did you decide to become how did you decide to become a journalist? What motivated you to pick this career as a woman? Well, for me, it's passion. Okay. I, <laughs> I right from childhood, I, I enjoy listening to good speeches. I like it when people talk and then like they, they, they make research, journalists make research and bring meaningful, valuable contribution to the society. Okay. So I think that um, you want to 
you 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 want to be part contribute your quota in the society also journalism also will give the chance to speak to people on issues that um, affect whether it affects or whether it, um, it's it's um, bringing discomfort or whatever it will bring um, enlighten people about um, different topics just we are talking about with the female journalism the mm. challenges they are facing mm -hmm. so it's in, uh, i love the um the career yeah that, because it's enlightened people mm. it gives room to enlighten people okay all right like just talking about lightning earlier I, I read to you someone from somalia who said that um, journalism is something that is risky especially for female gender. However, we've seen so many young Nigerian women, and now even despite the fact that they're of age, I'll list some to you. We have um, Eugenia Abu, Kiki Modi, Idroma, Kadaria, Ahmed, uh, Christiana Anyawu, Oluf Sholati, Momo, Bilikisu Labaran, Tosin Dokpesi, Linda Ikeji, Adiola Fayon, and the host of others, Lil Pamela and I. <laughs> yeah. So with these numbers, do you still feel like women are kind of underrepresented in Nigeria, especially in the journalism profession? Because uh, for, for truth, I studied mass communication, and I'll tell you that in our class then, we had majority as women. However, when you come to the field, uh, you find out that majority are men. So what do you think is the issue? Because if you have majority in the class studying mass communication, perhaps journalism, okay, and then you come out and you're not seeing them practicing. And I'll also uh, give you this too for free. Earlier I was having a discussion with uh, uh, someone and he said something uh, that, that struck um, something in my mind. He said that um, why is it that women, we hardly find women in the journalism space. This is a man talking these days. I tried to give him a whole lot of it. He said, that's not a reason. So do you think first women, do you feel women are underrepresented? I will not. I would say yes. And I will tend to disagree a bit because this is quite a number that mm. you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I think they have done very well for themselves. Mm. Ex uh, for uh, Particularly, I'll talk about Eugenia Abu because she is my mentor. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so... I think she have done so well and then she also have an outlet where she's mentoring whether it's young people or anybody that has interest in becoming a journalist whether male or female i don't think she has narrowed it to female alone but i think that she has contributed her quota and the other women that you have mentioned too um so i i think that women are not underrepresented but we want more mm. even the global uh, perspective has said that they have 40 40 percent of female journalism around the world so why can't why can't it be 60 if women are 40 percent on the tv then it means that men are about 60 percent or there about mm. why can't it why can't female be why can't it be the other way around mm. or even 50 50 i mean we are not competing with them as if we complement each other if the, the more the merrier right mm. but we should be able to complement each other so that the the gap is not lacking maybe like female are lacking behind or something but i think that's way one of the ways that this can happen is to encourage women because um sometimes maybe when, when you go to uh, um, a TV station, say for instance, there are roles that they feel like if see that it fits for women, for mm -hmm. the female journalist and for the male journalist. So I think that females should get the role. Every role should get should be able to practice their career and get to the top, yeah. as well as the men. So if you dis discriminate that there's a role for women, because say for instance they will give, um, they will say that um, in the end maybe women may probably get married and then start bearing children yeah somebody did that it was a process even for the men mm. somebody paid the price of conceiving and giving birth to them so they should be able to encourage women so that women also can get to the top <clears throat> so i think one of the way to encourage women is also that they should balance the role mm. you shouldn't be discriminate against women or even the even if it's work schedule don't say that the schedule fits women better mm. i think women also can also work in every schedule that is that mm. it's um been um, given mm. okay um, what are the challenges in female journalism or should i say what challenges have you faced so far 
as um, a female in this journalism field? And how have you been able to navigate through those challenges? Yeah, one thing uh, I would say that one, one way to navigate the challenges is passion. If it's what you want to do, what you enjoy doing, then you neglect some of those. Um, uh, is, that, is it that easy? Yeah, well, depending on what kind of harassment that comes your way. Mm. Say, for instance, uh, the 2023 general election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was observing. And um, during the presidential, it was quite calm because it was within the city center. Mm -hmm. But because the gubernatorial election that obviously <laughs> uh, we have to go to the states yeah, to sure. do that so yeah and um, i got different kind of intimidation maybe because i am writing or some somebody feel like they are intimidated by my presence because because of some of the activities that I was carrying in that polling mm -hmm. unit and they started uh, one thing also that helped me to navigate that was the fact that I understand the language they were speaking. Mm. So once I had, and nobody thought that I understand the language. So once I had their memorying, <laughs> yeah, it was house language. Oh, oh, wow. So why they were memorying, I like okay. So I feel like okay, it's time to leave. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the, the the most annoying aspect of that experience was the fact that one of them noticed that uh, maybe I let. Like, it was a polling unit. Some people had their phones, and so do I. I also had my phone. And so he thought that I recorded some of the activities that was going on. So he, in trying to lure me to think that he could lure me into giving him or telling him whether I record the activities or not, he was asking me, are you single? You know, be sincere to me. If you're single, like, I want to marry you. See, <laughs> like, do I, I told him, look, I am single, but I am not searching. <laughs> so this is one of the things that they, they just think that at the mention of marriage, journalists should just jump at their feet mm -hmm. and, you know, so I, I, I just think that um, you have to be smart about it and vigilant. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. This so one. have you experienced any kind of harassment apart from the story you just shared now? No. Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, all right. So there, there's this. Um, you know, um, you said earlier about um him saying you want if you if you, at least that one came to you directly and said I want to marry you. But um, I've often heard of journalists, especially field reporters, who um most times when a woman, let's take an instance of a woman who wants to get married, and she tells uh, so a man approaches her and she just tells the man, a journalist, say, oh, you're not a prostitute because. Uh, many people take sure. um, female journalists, especially the field reporters, mm -hmm. and even those that work in the studio as um, people who kind of feel very available to men because on day-to-day -day activities they get to meet people. And so, do, do you do you would you classify it as that? No, I won't classify. It as, uh, I won't box women into that box. And if there's anybody who is doing that, ah, uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> for lack of better word, I would say that. I don't think anybody should do that because there's dignity in labor and um, don't zone women because they are journalists because they so, because you feel she look pretty and then sometimes they are even intimidated they want to speak to you in a certain way and you're sticking to your job mm -hmm. then they want to make you feel a certain way and just say some of those things sometimes it's not necessarily that like it's coming from their hearts but they just want to get under your skin so as journalists i think that it is very important to um develop a thick skin so that uh, whatever they are saying does not get under your skin okay talking about thick skin <laughs> pamela um how do you then distinguish between uh, being thick in your skin or should I say for lack of a better word um, they call it uh, when, when they see a woman who is out there like for instance let's say um, yeah, Linda KG now I know she, she has been termed several things okay so it's just say it's a, a, a journalist like her herself and they tend to call them feminist um, seeking equal rights and, and, and the rest of it. So do you think journalism for women who practice it, uh, it's another way 
for um, perhaps um, um, advocating for fem feminism? No, I don't think so. It depends on what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, you, you, you don't, just because you are in the front of the camera does not mean you should come and start promoting feminism. It, yeah, like people go on in front of camera with different reasons. Mm -hmm. So you don't promote feminism because you not not the not a person mm. now but those out there who are thinking that okay because she's powerful she's a woman of substance she she's powerful with her pen she writes well she can bring down anybody with her pen she's good then they kind of attribute such a lady a as someone mm. who is a feminist it's not really a bad thing to be a feminist right it just depends on your definition of mm. being a feminist however yeah, I, I think that when I should report the um, the program or the, the activity that concerns the female journalist, there will be people who will give her tons up. And then if she also reports the ones that concerns the male journalist, if it deserves a tons up, they will give them. And some sometimes, again, I think those people feel intimidated by women. Mm -hmm. So they just want to box you in a cage and make you feel a certain mm -hmm. way. So I don't think um, being a journalist is promoting feminism. Okay, talking about uh, what they bring to the table. Now, what are uh, the unique perspective, unique insight, unique contribution that this female gender bring to the field that differs from the male counterparts? Well, at, they say variety is the spice of life once again, and women bring diversity in the, the newsroom or mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever. They bring diversity, and I think that when do you bring to the different perspective, just sometimes people also tend to even listen more because women are creative. They tr try to bring a lot of creativity in the reporting. So, yeah, I think... Okay, hmm. what a... Um, the pros and coins of um, of being a journalist. As a female. What do you yes, as a female, what do you look out for? Well, for me, I look out for good reporting. Okay. Yeah, I like. I want to report a news. I I ensure that I have the facts and details. Mm. And you know that women are very good nurturing. You give them anything, they nurture it properly. So when it's um, it's time to um to I beg your pardon <laughs> to carry out attacks I think women carry the attacks in in the most um, stylish mm -hmm. and uh, most uh, tr try to give more accurate and uh, facts and figures so yeah okay you spoke earlier about gender discrimination and bias you know we see those things across all industries where women are being discriminated how can we navigate this discrimination Please can talk about a female um, program, female-dominated program. Say they want to talk about um, breast cancer, and they, they speak about it. And um, yeah, people do not have um, a, a lot to criticize about. Mm -hmm. But when the female journalists are talking about uh, a, a topic that is more sensitive, sensitive to the yeah. men, mm -hmm. yeah, they tend to criticize them a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, even sometimes it's even the women that mm. criticize more so i think that if women support each other we mm. should build a strong support system and um mentor others i'll tell you a story one time i was in a program and um okay first of all i was in one program and um, eugenia abu was in that program mm. and then after she spoke you know it's time for q and a so I tried to raise a concern and it was like, it was so obvious that I raised a concern and then the person who was moderating that particular section, I went for another program mm. and then I was at, asked to speak mm. and then he was like, okay, when, say, I can't remember the person's name, but let me give an instance. Say, like, if Peter finished talking, mm. then we'll allow Eugenia Abu to speak. Mm. And then what was like, no, not Eugenia Abu, it's Stella Francis. So it is important that we should uh, not narrow journalists into a few uh, 
um, a few journalists that have done so very well. There should be room. We should accommodate others, whether upcoming, whether or whether you are the popular ones or even the ones that are coming behind. If we if we have um, we already have a mindset that when it comes to journali journalism, mm -hmm. it's either Linda Ikeji or um, Eugenia Abu or some of the names that mm -hmm. you mentioned mm -hmm. that's as a, at the peak of your phone or mm -hmm. internet, you get to those names, then it will be difficult for people to recognize other um, journalists. So the 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 big time journalists like the Eugenia Abu and Co also she also mentor even though she's already mentoring mm -hmm. she has done that I'm one of our mentee like more more journalists should do that mm -hmm. mentor people and then bring a lot of women in the front line so that um, okay. there will be continuity okay earlier you spoke about passion and uh, evidently uh, journalism is not um, where a uh, profession that pays um, so well yes and uh, uh, this gives the reason why many women will say that they, they wouldn't even want to venture aside from those who really really have passion no matter how the how big the station is to some extent you will not compare the pay of other uh, other sectors or other profession as to the journalism do you think it's a yastic to to mitigate the kind of representation or the, to to, um, to mitigate the number of women we see in journalism. Well, yeah, well, well, like I said earlier, passion passion can keep you going. But then, then passion will not put food on your table. Of course, mm, true. Yeah, yeah, sure. Passion will not put food on your table, but um, if you are passionate about it, you have something on the side. Like before you carry up a career you first of all analyze mm -hmm. what do i want with this career what do i want do i want can this put food on my table can this sustain me then you check all those and then see mm -hmm. if it's what you can do do i want to get something on the side that could put food on the table and then carry out this passion so, so those are some of the things that you should be able to look at and balance. Mm. Because if you just get in it because mm. you like the profession and you want to be on TV mm. and then you want to get money, don't assume that you're on TV, mm. you're on radio, you're on air, you get the, all the nice um, accolade that comes with it. Mm. Maybe fame. fame oh. Thank you. You, I think you might not go far with, mm. yeah, yeah. with the with the. Profession. Mm. Okay, in um, reporting stories, uh, are there challenges that you've faced because of your gender in your process of reporting um, your story, reporting any of the issues? Are there challenges you've faced as regarding your gender? Well, yeah. Um, personally, I wouldn't say that, but I think that. Um, we should be able to, like, um, as as genders, we already know that a female, I'm a female journalist, or you are a female journalist. It's one thing you already register it. Like, you need to develop that thick skin to be able for you to to do your reporting, regardless of what people think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still talking about reporting. Um, I was in a workshop recently where a female journalists raised an issue uh, about um, reporting what me what is meant to be and she she gave her um, narration in the sense that her workplace is dominated by of course the men the newsroom and uh, most times if you want to uh, file a story which is correct okay they suppress the story and she's really she has she has nothing to do she cannot do anything about it because perhaps uh, she she does not have the right or she she's not in a position to so and i also know that um one of the issues uh we tend to face in aside from very few companies who put women in the helm of affairs uh like those links i i listed out they kind of um uh, are in charge of various media stations okay some media stations put women at the helm of affairs however okay most times it seems as though the women are actually uh, not given those positions i know it's changing however but do you think uh th th there's need to do something as regards uh, especially with we uh coming
coming up journalists, journalists who are coming up in the newsroom, in the, in, in the field reporting, the programs and the likes? Yeah, I think that, um, like, like I earlier said, we need to mentor people. We need to mentor more women. And then, um, like, if you, a healthy competition, sometimes, yeah, people want to work with you, but you feel threatened, even as women. Women sometimes are, we are the bigger, we are the biggest problem, mm. our own problem. Mm. So by the time we embark on healthy competition, yes, then we can be able to accommodate more women mm. to the table. Be and I would say that the fact that men are dominating, dominate at the table mm. does not mean you should find a seat on the table. Mm. Yeah. If they allow you, if, if, <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, Fine, if they don't give you a seat, find your way there, make alliance, create alliance, mm. okay, because they are dominated, mm. and your voice would be one tiny voice. Mm. Yeah, maybe they want to cast a vote, and you just like you said, you want to report the right mm. um, message, and some of them are telling you. So you, you try to find allies. You start talking to some of those men and see who has um, the same... Um, um, mindset or who have who the same kind of values value system then you start you start creating and you need to find yourself on the table so sometimes you sit on the you you, you sit uh, you sit you sit on the floor beside them and <laughs> try to <laughs> find your way on the, the table yes yeah, yeah. so I, I don't think that those um, uh, those women you mentioned also find it easy to mm. get on the table mm. i think it, it was a lot of maybe a bit of fight at the background so yes i think that we need to be consistent and a way to fight is being consistent mm. you have to be consistent with what you're doing don't get easily get frustrated that's where the thick skin comes in mm. yeah they say do tell them no i think this is the right thing and you keep shouting mm -hmm. and shouting until <laughs> that tiny voice become uh, uh, a... Well, shouting could be perceived as uh, nagging and say, every woman nags. Yeah. So well, it's not necessarily push. nagging, mm. but just push. Just push. push. Just push. Mm. Yes, by, um, by raising your voice, I don't mean you should nag. Mm. I just mean you should give reasons why this should be... Okay, I needed to yes. clarify that. Well, we still have more questions for our guests, but we'll go on the short break when we return and gender continues. Stay with us. Uh, my name is Sheila BCF, I'm the Black Comedian of the Federal Republic. I tell you when it comes to the best of entertainment, the best of news, the best of information, something that is educative, you're right here at the best place to see that. It's Captain TV. Do you know what? Increase the volume. Keep watching. Don't touch the dial, okay? Uh -huh. It's your girl in Kechi Blessing Sunday. I want you all to keep watching Captain TV. Please keep watching Captain TV. It is the best TV station in the country. They're doing an amazing job. Please do not touch the dial. Keep watching. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sheila BCF, I'm the Black Comedian of the Federal Republic. I tell you when it comes to the best of entertainment, the best of news, the best of information, something that is educative, you're right here at the best place to see that. It's Captain TV. Welcome back to the program. If you've just joined us, this is Engender and it's coming to you live from Abuja Studios here on Captain Television. And we'll be discussing um, working as a female journalist, the pros and cons with our guests here seated in the studio, Mrs. or Miss Frances Uta. 
Okay, Thank you. you've, you've given us so much insight on the topic so far. Now we want to know the impact of having more journalism, more um, female journalists rather in this field. Like what impact does it have on the society, on um, 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 the country at large? Lots more. Well, women journalists have made significant contribution to the media industry, and uh, bringing enough, bringing more women will bring uniqueness to to the newsroom. It will also bring diversity to the newsroom. So I think that um, more women, like I earlier said, the more the merrier. The more women, like we earlier said about the voices, when we have more women, women can also be able to speak and some of the challenges mm -hmm. that um, she mentioned can also, she can, we, women can now form allies and also speak that the need for the right reporting uh, rather than maybe in the other way you know when 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 you have debates or when you have to vote for any um, form of um, any voting for any reason whether it's for the news to happen whether to have some more women if you have one woman and you have three men then obviously your the guess is good as your voice is very tiny so but when you have more women women also can also push for the um, activities that promotes gender, uh, that also um, benefits gender. Mm. All right, well, gender. Oh, 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 all right. Why do you think uh, women are mostly sexualized, especially in this uh, field? I know I made, made mention about uh, uh, women, uh, of course, being uh, called certain names like um, stereotyping women in, in the field of journalism. But why do you think they are truly sexualized? I remember then in school, we're told that uh, uh, as a female, there's this uh, sense of sexual appeal, first of all, perhaps on broadcasting, and that's why they would prefer a woman's voice to a male's, uh, the male counterpart in terms of. Um, the, the, the voice, the sexual appeal, and of course, um, uh, in, in, in like broadcasting, presenting still, you said it earlier too, that some, there are some rules that women cannot take and the men counterparts will take it. Uh, mostly, the women are usually in the studio. We, are, we know this, right? And the men are in the charge of our, at, at the helm of the affairs. They, they, they make, they say, you go and sit there in that studio, you go and cast the news, you go and, <laughs> okay? So, but why do you think women are sexual? Is this the reason why we often see outside in, in the field? They say, no, you're not supposed to be in the field as the woman, okay? You're not supposed to go to Sambisa. You are well, a woman who goes to Sambisa. You should know that you're going to get a very good report from her. Correct. Okay, so why do you think women are often social? Is it a social issue? Is it a cultural issue? Or is it just uh, humane? Well, in my opinion, I say that sometimes they tend to look like women are the... I, I don't want to use the word maker, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know. Maybe because of um, the way women are, are programmed. I don't know if that's right, but mm -hmm. the way women are... Maybe because they just look at women are fragile. Of course, yes, when women report, even when you're going to prison, yeah. one time we're going to, to prison visitation and people were um, soliciting that there should be more women. And when we get to the prison, women should speak. Yeah. So that um, I don't know what that means. I'm going to wait for it. So that was. That's on a lighter note. Yes. Yeah. So they're like women should speak. Those, uh, especially the guys, have stayed for a very long time. They're like uh, women' voice brings some calmness mm. to the <laughs> to to an environment as against the men. Mm. So like when you talk nicely and calm to to the prisoners for for now. For instance, I think maybe bring them kind of home, and so I think that um, women bring lots of uniqueness. So mm. that should be, but I don't think that they should stereotype that this role should be for women. I just I I said that women can carry out any role, but they should have it in mind that sometimes they want to give excuse that mm. uh, in few years now she's married and mm. she probably she's still having kids. They should also know that. Um, it's, that's what complements women. That's what women are tailored for. Yeah. So the fact that women are tailored f that way does not mean they should choose, pick and choose the roles for women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I, I was I, I caught you in there. I was going to ask since you're talking about uh, marriage now, mm. uh, th because I've um, we've had uh, some guests in the studio who said, "Oh, I, I was a journalist. I had to. I'm in the media. I had to like 
quit for a while. I'm going to go back after childbirth and, and the likes. Do you think marriage should really put a pause, especially looking at um, realistically what journalism entails? Do you think marriage should put a pause uh, in, in, in your career? That's why I said that the men should try to complement, even the, the higher authority, whether it's TV station or radio station, should also try to create a balance that at some point a woman will probably be married and yeah, because like I have a colleague who always comes to the studio with her child. Sometimes it's it's a bit distracting, mm -hmm. but you you just understand that it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes you try not to see Manuel, but <laughs> 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 yeah. And then there are quite some um, male folks also that also are very supportive. See, I don't know whether I have to mention it, but Lupe is very supportive. All the time you see him carrying the baby and then make ensuring that the mm. mother have time. So by if the if the board, the hem of our face understand that there's there will come a time where we have female in the maybe that time will come. I don't think women should go, but I think they should pay women more so that women can be able to put the children mm -hmm. and roll the kids in the crutch and so that they can be better reporting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I think. Talking about men supporting women, we have one in the studio, in our studio here, mm -hmm. Daniel. He's always looking at <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Very great. But one thing he's told me was, so Lamide is very hard working. Even before she gave birth, she's always up and doing. So anytime she finds a reason to want to help her, mm. she he's happy it. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we should have too. more yeah. more Lupe and more Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> shout out to Daniel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Lupe. <laughs> oh, all right. So I was still going to ask you about uh, you said um, there should be like uh, an alliance. Uh, women should form alliance. I, I'm aware that uh, there's, there's an association or there are various associations that kind of uh, women are uh, involved in, especially women in journalism. I know I don't know if I should mention, but I know of some few. I know you know to uh, and every journalist there. I know, but sometimes it seems as though um, it's uh, actually a difficult task to get into some of these associations. So my question would be, do you think uh, associations are doing its best or enough to um, kind of, um, when it comes to um, indoctrinate newbies, you talk about mentoring, do you think yeah, the, ro know. the role of mentoring is still trying to find its way in Nigeria. Why? Because I've had my fair share of mentorship and also I have a couple of mentees, but trust me, there are some of those people who are big enough to be mentors, but they think they see you as competition. Hmm. And then, so it becomes so difficult. And um, if... Uh, I'll tell you about my one of my menti mentors. Um, one time, we she um, she's into NGO, and then she invited me to attend a conference with her, international conference. And one thing that one of my friends said was that if she was not a woman, I would have think otherwise. But because she's a woman, and she was wondering how can she do such big? It, it was such a big deal for her. And she, 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 she couldn't understand why my mentor did that. So shout out to my mentor too. Mm. Uh, that was really a big deal. Mm. And it, so I think that women should just see it for posterity. Don't look at like, I give you this, what can I get? Mm. You become a competition. So these are some of the things that make some of those association. Well, these people want to remain at the top. But when you think about the legacy that you are leaving, when you pass it on, when you give it, and these people are passing it out, it could be, it will be traced to you, whether mm. you're there or not. So it would be nice to see that you mentor people. Just for, for instance, I, I, I don't know how Eugenia Abu felt when I was in a program with her and then I was, I, I, I was, I was, um, okay. I was spotlighted. I don't know if to use the word spotlighted, but, um, uh, and for me, it was a beautiful thing because after the, after I finished making my comments, I went to whisper to her. 
that this is product, this, this is your product. And she laughed and she gave me a very big hug. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's beautiful. And I am happy to pass it down. I don't know if I have learned enough, but uh, the little that I have learned, I am also passing it. So this is one way that we can encourage ourselves, healthy competition and mentorship. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, many reports have it that women are being underreported um, and underrepresented as well. But what can you say about it so far? Will you say there have been changes in um, the female journalism? Will you say people are coming in and they are doing their best? Um, yeah. Women issues are being reported on and women are being represented. Yes, I think we slowly but stay, surely will get there. But I think that there's a progress. There's progress mm. from the reporting and um, yeah, what we see on the news these days. More women are giving chance and um, I think there's progress. Okay, well, what is your opinion on the delegation of um, a reporter to a beat? Like, we want women to be represented. I know there are editors who will share, okay, you go cover this beat. Um, if, don't you think women should be given the women beat? Like, stories or issues that have to deal with the women like a woman should go cover it so they mm. can represent better what is your opinion on that mm. i don't think uh, I, I think it's nice but i don't think that women should be boxed into uh, as women program go and do your thing mm. like even in the women program we need some balance yeah mm. when there are men in the program you feel uh, a certain okay there's diversity <clears throat> but when we're talking about our issues and we're talking it to ourselves and the men are not listening to our problems in the end they are who, are, who is um, oppressing the women yeah. the men right so they need to be in our program mm -hmm. and also look at those challenges that we are facing listen to us and who knows it could change them so I, I don't think that um, they should be specific role for specific people I think that everybody can report everybody does you know can do it in, a, in their different unique ways okay. okay so i'd like to ask um just on light and mode um, which would you choose uh to be as a field reporter or a journalist or a studio broadcaster well <laughs> i like to take tough challenging rules mm -hmm. so anyway i've not worked in the mm -hmm. field mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. but it would be nice to try that yeah. yeah, you want to be a journalist, be the, be the, <laughs> like, get the experience of both the field and the studio, right? Mm. So I think that, yeah, there should be balance. Mm. So now you can tell me the experience of on the field mm. and as well as the studio. Mm. Do you understand? So it's beautiful. And you said you've seen the four words of journalism. Mm. Oh, how about that? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I think okay. it's beautiful. You know, um, out there, the fights, like we've been saying, the equality stuff between mm. the men and the women. Mm. So I want you to put out a word to the men out there, like encourage them. First of all, you have to tell us the role men have to play in um, making the women better in this journalism game. Then um, the fact that most of them feel, um, um, what's the word? Most superior? Them, no, not superior. Most of them feel... Um, like the women are coming to take their place or mm. something. Mm. So I want you to put your word there, trying to advise them on. And like, if you also notice, um, I was looking, uh, I went for a workshop recently and I noticed the guild of editors, they're all oh. men. Oh my God, what is this? I need that. I wish I, I can be there. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> just answer to yeah, this, question. Yeah, yes, yes. Fine. That's why I said, fine alliance. Like, why can't they be women there? We, by the time we find alliance, look like all aspects of journalism. It's it's beautiful. What mm -hmm. it's like a bowl of salad. You have everything in it in one bowl. So if you have the knowledge from um, editing, field work, um, news reporting, like it's a bowl of salad, and you have everything in it. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's very beautiful. So I would like to say that men, please don't be intimidated by women. Mm. Support women. Give them those roles. Tomorrow you are not there. And posterity will remember you that you to keep the journalism alive, mm. you mentored a woman. 
and then women also you can mentor of male journalism let's not um, 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 box it that okay like uh, I'm a female so let me reach out more to the female or I'm a male journalist let me reach out to the male let's put a balance mm. so that um, yeah everybody can get there and then the roles also should go around don't put it they shouldn't be for um, for male dominated folks it should be every for everyone females should get the role and like i'll tell you a story my niece um she she became a prefect in our school and i was asking her how are you balancing your prefectship and your school work she just looked at me straight in the eye like i have an assistant <laughs> <laughs> so I know that this means sometimes she struggle with her book a yeah. bit. But the confidence, yeah. so this is where we start building this confidence, right? Mm -hmm. From childhood, mm -hmm. don't um, stereotype and say this job is for this mm -hmm. or the head also will always be the men. No, mm -hmm. the, the, the male also can also be assistant. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we do that, it will help. All right. Um, I also like to ask you. You said we're still talking about mentorship. Would you advise a female mentor, a female, rather than a man mentor, a female? Because we've had um, issues where most times it's difficult to have a mentor who's a male, and there's no the sexual thing in between. Or even if it's not happen happening, the, the talks by the society enough to is enough to make it happen in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> no, it shouldn't be enough to make it. Happen. Yeah, you, you, you yeah. might just say it, 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 perhaps a boss and uh, and someone else, maybe a female still like they are dating. You are not dating, but at the end of the day, you will still date. This is where the thick skin. <laughs> this is where the thick skin will yeah. save you. If you build that thick skin, whatever they okay. say would not get under it. Yeah. Anybody can mentor anybody. But it will be very beautiful for female, for women to support women, yeah? Mm. Mentor women and, um, yeah, it, it will be beautiful. But don't, um, don't, um, what's it called now? Don't say no to a male mentorship simply because people will mm -hmm. think that mm. there's something between you. No. Mm. <laughs> knowledge is key yeah. Mm. so yeah anywhere you want to grab you there's knowledge for you to grab mm. By okay, means, okay. Do, you it. do you think a newbie in journalism should approach a mentor um, because I've heard someone said mentors speak you you don't pick a mentor or something mentee does not pick a mentor but a mentor picks a no, mentor no that's not correct mm. mentors uh, like it's a few people that have access to their mentors before now, Oprah Winfrey used to be my mentor. I only see my mentor on the internet. So you don't have to be one-on-one -on -one mentor. It doesn't have to be one-on-one -on -one mentorship. If you're privileged to have one-on-one -on -one mentorship, hold it to a high esteem. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, look at... Uh, you wouldn't be the best. Look at the, the, the best journalist in the world. And... Because she's far from you or because it's far from you, you don't want to follow her and see how she does or how she gets to the top. Wouldn't that be classified as role modeling and not mentorship? Hmm? Wouldn't that be classified as role modeling, not mentorship? Y yeah, that's role modeling, but in a way you're learning. In a way you're learning. Mm. You're learning. Mm. I know there was, there's no physical um, conversation, mm. but there's a lot. The world is going global now. Like they used to say that it's mm. a global village. Mm. Okay. Now it's a, it's a global community. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, very soon, I was watching a program and they said, very soon, um, the, the workplace will now be like, I, maybe I traveled to China and I was like, I want to work for one week and just get out. Mm. So it's uh, the the artificial artificial intelligence mm -hmm. is really is here to stay. Mm -hmm. So the earlier we embrace it, the better for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you must not uh, stick to a role model that it's or mentor that it's mm -hmm. one on one. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, no earlier you spoke about the challenges you encounter because you're a female in this journalism. Now, are the advantage you've gotten like because mm -hmm. I'm a female, like mm -hmm. I was advantaged to have social thing in the field. Well, for now, <laughs> for now, mm, no, no. Mm. for now, like I, I'm not always on the field. Okay. I'm not always you on the field. Even in the studios. 
Well, in the studio, you know, the radio is uh, you just speak to people. But I'm sure, but I'm sure you have people who go uh, to the field and bring back reports or that experience uh, outside. I would have said one or two. I also talked about meeting people in the studio. You have your guests who come to the studio, just like we have you uh, yeah. presently. You, I'm sure you would have gotten one or two, perhaps positive impacts. On, on yourself of course <laughs> you, the more you are on radio the more you you keep learning mm. you keep learning and you are convinced like one thing that radio have taught me is the fact that i do virtual meetings with people and sometimes um I'm, uh, I'm giving a room to talk to maybe i i host um virtual meetings internationally and some of my audience will like when it's you know when you are not speaking and most people t tend to turn their videos and um, just listen and some of them complain like i'm not comfortable comfortable it's like i'm speaking to myself mm. so most times i turn on my video mm. and stay to give some support to whoever is speaking but i don't feel that way i just speak to people and um i don't feel like i'm speaking to myself mm. so yeah that's a very big advantage mm. of I can, I can speaking on radio one time we went for an event like a field work and all the reporters were outside so they wanted to speak to a permanent man i can i cannot remember the person's name so somebody just came to a leader we want you to go approach him first oh. <laughs> so when she go there she just oh. you know, pay attention mm. like if i go mm. there you might know yeah. So that is an advantage. Yeah. So is that really an advantage? Of course, that's I've, I've, had, I've had people approach me, like when on my beats, for instance. Uh, it was recently I went for a report, and someone, one of the journalists, our male counterparts, came and said, Go and meet him, collect his contact mm -hmm. so that you can go and call for interviews subsequently or something. I was like, I don't understand. Look at his wife there. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you are already. Yeah, <laughs> sorry to question. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, so like, like, look at your wife there. How would you say his wife there? How would you say you go yourself at least? You know, so it's true. So, that, I don't think that that's an advantage. That's the man trying to use me to get something. So, I don't That's really... also an advantage. If you would have wanted to do it for yourself, mm. it's an advantage just because mm -hmm. you are feeling he's trying to use you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It should have been easier, whether we like it or not. Yes. Men and women is easier. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, it's easier to and, you know, a lady to go meet a man to collect than a man going to meet a man to collect. Mm. Yes, and another thing I will add to what you've just said is that the fact that there are a lot of media houses, where probably everybody is struggling to be heard. Mm. So if you are the first to approach him, then you have the, uh, <laughs> the first hand information. Mm. Because mm. sometimes other people may probably not hear, they want to collect from somebody and mm. you know the third party kind of mm. thing. Mm. But if you get it from the right source, I think you are of more advantage. Mm. So yes, I think it's an advantage. Mm. And the fact that for me, when I want to report, if I want to do, I want to do, I want to deliver a good job, yeah? I don't want to think that because that's not my motive. I don't have any ulterior exactly. motive. Mm -hmm. I just want to do a good reporting. Mm -hmm. And if I approach you and maybe your wife feel a certain way, uh, by all means, I will apologize. But because I don't have that mm -hmm. um, motive, I'm, I didn't even conceive the fact that I want to speak to you or your wife mm -hmm. or something. I just mm -hmm. want to do my mm -hmm. job. I think that should be the driving force. Mm -hmm. I want to d deliver my job and not that um sizing whether it's why whether mm. do I, I know you're speaking to me right now the profession is better than sacrifice okay so i'm going to ask them um, if you think their policies uh, uh government can bring in place to help support women in journalism okay recently um i noticed that many ngos we have many non-governmental organizations who kind of make uh, relevant uh, impacts in the society, bringing in journalists, be it uh, female journalists, we have those for female journalists, those for everybody. I'll tell you, uh, what is in is part of it. Um, countries, different countries, we see Kenya and the rest. I was privileged to be part of it recently. So, and it's just seen as though it's just the non-governmental organizations that are doing it. Do you think the governments can come in in a way? 
Yes, the government have a role to play, but let me tell you, in building the nations, it's a collective effort. If you leave it for the government, then... <laughs> ah. But in this case, the private organizations and citizens feel are doing even more. More than the government. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Government is to put policy. And to mm. be fair, if we leave everything for government, then there will be no nation mm. for us. So it's a collective effort. We all have to put ourselves together. Like I, I also work with an NGO. I do peace building. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we go to the field, we donate our monies, we do all those things as individuals, no support from the government. Sometimes you can get um, support from international organizations, mm -hmm. but once in a while. So the fact that um, maybe government is trying, but it's not reaching to us, maybe the, 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 the voice is, like I said, the voice maybe in this case is tinier mm. than because Nigeria it's a diverse uh, nation with over two hundred and something million people mm. uh, as per the last um statistic yeah. sensor. So um I think we are even more. Yeah. So yeah, we need to bring support from everywhere to mm. build our nation, yeah, not just depend on policy. government. What policy do you think the government should bring out, especially in times of um, disseminating fake news now we have so many fake news out there what policy do you think the government should should put out there well <laughs> yeah fake news fake news also i, I don't know i'm afraid yeah, fake news is also here to stay mm. because uh, there are lots of uh, journalists different people mm. want to report for different reasons mm. some want to report for for want to chase cloud and some wants, want to disseminate information and some want for financial purposes. So there are different um, reasons, different purposes why mm. people want to disseminate news, mm. so whether it's fake or the right news. So I think that um, ah, this is a, an ongoing conversation. Yeah. I think yeah. it, 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 it's an ongoing conversation. Okay, before you leave, it's mm. like we are almost rounding up can you give us strategy i want you to talk to journalists out there strategy that can help them succeed in this field like that's a female so here that can help the female succeed and also newbies out there watching us that will want to be a journalist a female journalist in the future what do you have for them yeah for the newbies i tell you that um you have to be you have to define why you want to be a journalist mm -hmm. if you want to be a journalist because you think there's great and glam then you have to think twice mm -hmm. but if it's part out of passion then also mm -hmm. you need to look for a way to put food on the table mm -hmm. because uh, you can you will not just start today and start provide to so not provide the kind of funds that you probably would need so yeah you should put that in mind that you need to have something on the side and um for the to a generally mentor someone pass down knowledge to people reach out to somebody there's a the, the, there's a program like she mentioned that she was privileged to mm -hmm. attend the program Call a fellow journalist, a mm. fellow female. Like I okay. did call you, Pamela. <laughs> you need to call me next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah. I didn't call me. Mm. I was just so busy. Okay. okay. So yeah, we should inform, disseminate information. Yeah, that's the job of journalists. Right? Mm -hmm. It mustn't be you, but maybe if you had attended, maybe your your take home might be she might benefit from it mm. yeah and by the time you share the things with your take home her take home mm. yeah you see there's a lot to to learn to pick from mm. what she has learned and what you have learned and if if i was there also there will be a lot mm. to pick from <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah i think that it's important that we should mentor people and then also like you don't need to um uh, by mentoring i don't mean you should mentor you say come I am mentoring this this no when you see other people doing things that you think that you can make an impulse that could make that better you could just chip in and it's a uh, one-off thing don't oh indeed Stella. thank you, thank so, you much. so much for coming to the show we yeah. really enjoyed you yeah great insights yeah. we you know it's 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 just a, a build up to what we already know though yeah. there's something she was saying like yeah I know them but I didn't really know them <laughs> this last one she just said that 
they must not come to you first. Yeah. Like if you see someone doing it the wrong way and you feel you have mm. an impact, yes. there's something you can do to help the person better. Yeah. And just chip in. And that, that might take comfort. Uh, yeah, for me, I think that is the part of alliance. We must form, no matter what people will say, because I'm usually really, really like uh, uh, withdrawn when it comes to meeting people. Okay, I won't learn from you or something, especially the main, the male concept, because I've had my own share of experience in mm -hmm. the past. So most of them, I really do not advocate women going to meet <laughs> men or men and men. <laughs> <laughs> but not to say there are not good few out That's there, so however. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a wonderful Thank time you so with you. Much. Thank you. Yeah. When we call you next time, you're going to come. Oh, I'm glad you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, viewers. Hope you've been taking one or two from our conversation this evening. For you out there who is aspiring to be a journalist, one thing she said it's passion. I always tell people it's passion. It's, if it's based on my salary, my sister will not be here. <laughs> and I am Victoria. I'll be on to Thursday. I am Pamela Ajero. Thanks for staying with us. Bye for now.